are doing a new Pravada exclusive today and I'm not sure how I feel about it. I mean, I've been finding a number of different Connecticut's that I like quite a bit, but I'm not a Connecticut fan. And so when I got this one, um, I was excited to get one of the Southern Draw. This is the Southern Draw Pravada Connecticut exclusive. It is a traditional Churchill cigar, Connecticut shade wrapper. That's all we know about it. The blend is undisclosed. I really, really wanted the Nicaraguan one. They did a Connecticut and they did a Nicaraguan one. And I wanted that Nicaraguan one so bad, but I got this. So, but I'm gonna keep an open mind because I've had a number of different Connecticut's, especially in the last year, that I really, really enjoyed. Southern Draw, AJ Fernandez blended it. Connecticut Shade, binder and filler uh, undisclosed. Churchill, seven by 50. It was aged or allowed to rest for an additional year after it was uh, produced. Wow. It reminds me of being in Hawaii. Uh, in, I did a project a few years back. I, had to, I made a trip to Hawaii. I think I did three or four trips, three trips to Hawaii. Company paid, man, it was awesome. And uh, that just reminds me of the place I was staying. Uh, I did the wireless at the Grand Hyatt Kauai. So if you ever stay there, um, the wireless, I, well, if it's still there, the, in, that's been a number of years now. Oh, it, it feels, feels kind of soft. I, uh, let's check it with the Cigar Medics humidimeter. All right, we're at 62% on the foot. And at the head, we're at 67. I'm going to use matches because I have learned that one way to screw up a Connecticut experience is to get it too hot with a uh, torch lighter. So we're going to, well, first we'll take some cold draw notes off of it. Hmm. Okay, the draw is about perfect. It's almost creamy just on the cold draw. Cinnamon and, and uh, maybe a little bit of cedar. That's it. Huh. So far it's not too bad. Now, what I decided to do, it is morning. It is uh, 10.30 in the morning. I am uh, technically working right now. I've got my work laptop here. Uh, what I did was I made uh, a cappuccino from my beautiful rocket espresso machine. The milk, of course, is from my goat mini. And uh, the blend is from Lost Dutchman Roasters. This particular one is called Jacob's Dynamite Shack. It is pretty much a regular go-to, uh, especially for espresso drinks for me. It's got a little bit more pepper in the nose than I anticipated. It's still kind of stinging right now. Finish is not real long. Not yet anyways. But I do think there's a bit of creaminess there. A little bit of a pepper hit in the back of the throat. I'm gonna let it warm up a bit. But uh, let's talk about some stuff that's going on with Pravada. I'm, uh, I was very excited. I got on their website. I was very excited to see that the shop is growing. The shop, they're getting more regular stuff into the shop. So PravadaCigarClub.com, you click on shop. And of course, you've got your monthly subscription, farm rolled, if you wanna do the farm rolled thing. Go back and watch my videos on that. Fantastic uh, deal. The gift box, I'm guessing, is just if you want to get uh, one of the regular monthly subscriptions for a friend or something like that, uh, I'm guessing it would just be a one-time uh, gift thing. But they've got a bunch of Aganorsa stuff. Uh, Brian is really doing a lot of stuff with Aganorsa, which I love. HVC, Aganorsa. We've got some aging room there, some AJ Fernandez cigars, but 
What I want to draw your attention to is, uh, okay, the Viva La Vida from A.J. Fernandez. Alec Bradley, fine and rare, a number of different Alec Bradleys, Ashton, uh, Arturo Fuente. So he's getting a, a pretty nice selection in there. But uh, the other day I was on here and I saw that he had uh, right here. Look at this. Crown Heads Buckeye Land. Good price for it too. Uh, the Court Reserve in a Robusto. The Juarez in the OBS size. Anyways, uh, a number of different crown heads. La Coalition, uh, Imperiosa. So he's, he's got some crown head stuff on there. That's fantastic. Dapper Cigars. I, uh, I just did a review on Dapper. Fantastic smoke. So things are really coming together with the site. Dinner with Eric Espinosa or Dinner with Matt Booth. What is this about? If you find yourself in Spokane, Washington, you can purchase dinner with Matt Booth. Spokane, Washington. Are you kidding me? I'm from Spokane. I was born there. Imagine an evening of cigars, food, and getting to know the legendary, uh, the legend of our industry. So, why Spokane, Washington? Is Matt Booth in Spokane, Washington? $200 of the proceeds go to charity, while $100 goes towards the meal. Three cigars from Matt's stash uh, will be shared as well. This is an experience never before offered. Matt is a charismatic ma master charismatic master of his craft. Wow, that is crazy. And I'm, I'm actually going to be in Spokane in uh, about a month, month and a half, a little over a month. Right, right now the burn on this thing is is doing very nicely. The draw is perfect. Um, the construction is very nice. Uh, that's that's another thing. I'm not a fan of Connecticut Shade wrappers, uh, how they smoke, or or the flavor I should say. Uh, nor am I a fan of the look. I don't know why, but there, it's just not as rich and velvety and just. Everything that I personally associate and like with a cigar, you don't see in a Connecticut shade. But this is a very nice wrapper. Uh, it's the veins are very, very uh, small, uh, minuscule even. Uh, boy, you almost can't even see the seams. So yeah, there's a little bit of pepper there, and it's a it's a good black and white pepper mix. And uh, the creaminess is pretty light. It's I we'll see what happens as it goes on. And the retro hail is good. Uh, I'm I'm getting some nuttiness. I'm trying to figure out what nut that is. It's kind of a mix between cedar and pecans, which is interesting. All right, I'm gonna smoke on this for a while, guys. I will come back toward the end to recap it, and uh, that's it, so stick around. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Well, I had my doubts for sure, but uh, pretty darn good smoke. It's a mild smoke. I think anybody who is looking for uh, it really just a good starter smoke this is this is fantastic it's got it's got some pretty decent complexity a little bit of creaminess creaminess isn't as heavy as as uh, you sometimes get with Connecticut but it's still there so I did have a couple issues with the wrapper you can see one there so uh, let's talk a little bit about the smoke first third pepper that's where you get the the bulk of the pepper now that wasn't necessarily dominant and it was really only through the retro hail that's pretty typical for uh, when you first light up a cigar uh, especially that first quarter to half inch you're usually going to get a lot more pepper and, and spiciness the body has definitely picked up now but through most of the smoke it's a fairly light body a um, little bit of texture going on in the mouth so that's pretty nice 
By the end of the first third, the retrohale became very smooth and it's been really smooth through the rest of the smoke. A nice sweetness set in at the end of the first third. It was very mild, vegetal, not, didn't really relate it to anything specific. Now, I will say this, cappuccino being kind of a heavy drink because of the milk and stuff, mine because of my goat milk, Cappuccino, I, I really liked it with this cigar. Um, it may have taken away a little bit from the experience. It might have been a little too heavy of a drink, but I think it actually paired pretty nicely. An issue I had in the first third that I was worried about was even though the draw was great, it didn't seem like I could get any smoke through it. I was doing a lot of double and triple draw, that sort of thing. But by the time I got to the halfway point, it had opened up, the smoke was nice, really nice. I, I'm very pleasantly surprised with this cigar. Okay, and then in this last third, there's, there's a flavor that I've always associated with Connecticut shade cigars that has been the main reason why I generally avoid them. And it's what, the, the, I come, came up with this term, <clears throat> actually, if I remember correctly, Thompson's came up with this for me, and it was dust, du a, a dustiness. Well, let, let me rephrase that. I always used to see Connecticut shades described as being earthy. And the earth note to me was always sort of a dry dustiness. And in a bad Connecticut, that dusty flavor is, is all you get, and it's just nasty. It's, it, I don't like it. And it's why I've avoided Connecticut's. Um, I think in the past couple years, companies have really focused more on, on the blend and how the blend marries with the wrapper and stuff and have kind of gotten away from that dusty note. Now, that being said, in this last third, I've started picking up some of that dust, but it's not bad. It's, it's, blended with the other flavors such that it's not putting me off at all. The price on this cigar, let's see if they still have it on the website. All right, they're not on the website anymore, apparently. But the cigar was selling for 15 bucks on Provada. That's too much. That's too much for this cigar. $12 would make it much more appealing. Um, and, I, and I'm speaking purely from my own experience, my own uh, opinion and stuff here. Uh, there's, I won't give names, but there's a couple other uh, Connecticut's that I would go to uh, before this. Uh, and primarily because those Connecticut's are heavier and, and more bold. So I guess burn, it burned great. Instruction was real nice. I, I'm not sure why the wrapper cracked. It's a very delicate wrapper, I can tell that right off the bat. Um, you know, everything, everything I get from Provada is always in good condition uh, when I get it. And of course he ships with Bovida, so it went straight. It, actually, I never took it out of the bag. I just opened the bag and put it in my humidor. And this has been sitting now for about two weeks in there. So I'm not sure why the wrapper cracked like that. If you have to relight a cigar, the best way to do it is to really give it a good torching. Heat that cherry up real good, right in the, you don't want to hit the wrapper, you just want to hit the core tobacco real good. Get it nice and hot, and then you want to purge it. That's the first thing you want to do is purge it real good. If you don't purge it, you'll get a sharp bitterness, uh, charry note and stuff as you draw that stuff through. And then it'll affect the rest of the smoke because you've drawn that char through the smoke and you're just gonna keep uh, getting it as you burn through it. So you wanna make sure you purge it real well. Construction, I gave it a four because of those um, two blowouts I had with the wrapper cracked and stuff. 
I think the cigar was properly humidified. Um, anyways, I gave it a four, plus the fact that th it took the first third of the cigar for it to sort of open up and give me any good smoke. The burn, I gave a four, same reasons. Flavor was a four. Not particularly in my wheelhouse, not, not my favorite sort of palette notes and stuff. But, you know, it's, it's a good smoke. That nice sweetness, the body is light, which uh, I, I think goes with this cigar really well. I tend to like a heavier body, but uh, that lighter body worked real well with this. Body was a 4.5. Transition was a 3. Um, just average uh, on transitions. The transitions were nice. That last part where I, when I started getting the dust and minerality, that kind of just jumped out. Um, so that's why I got a 3. Price, I gave the price a 2. Uh, I just think that f for me personally, I think uh, 15 bucks is too much for this stick. 12 would be much more acceptable, although I'd even like to see it a little south of that. So overall, the score was a 3.6. Until the next video, guys, stay rugged.